What's become clear in 2023 is that the range of budget mini PCs has improved dramatically and provide more value than ever. In the first six months of this year, I've already got my hands dirty reviewing 10 budget minis under $250 US, with extensive testing and comparisons across the board, and all 10 in-depth reviews are linked in the video description. But this video summarizes my top 5, taking all factors into account, price, performance, features, and noise. You won't find another mini PC video or article more comprehensive than this one with actual comparisons. But before we continue, the EaseUS Data Recovery Wizard app is very simple to use and can help you recover your lost data, whether it's on your internal drive, USB storage, or SD card. It also has support for repairing damaged photos and videos. Check out the free trial in the video description to find out what it can recover on your storage drives. Okay, be aware that Intel dominates the budget mini PC space as AMD has no entry level mobile CPUs. So AMD fans can send all their complaints in care of AMD CEO Lisa Su. That being said, there's still a surprise at the end of the video which I don't think you should miss, especially for US viewers if you want to make the best buying decision. Don't forget to check your local pricing for the ones that appeal to you, whether it's Amazon, AliExpress or the seller's direct website. This year I've decided to do something a bit different and order the list by taking into account the Amazon US pricing at the time of this video. And so without wasting your time further, let's start with number 5. The Geekon Mini Air 11 arrived late on my desk after its release and really surprised me with just how good it is for a budget mini PC. It looks and feels like a mid-range Intel NUC product. It has a dirt cheap price coming in as low as $130 US. There's a reason for that of course. The Mini Air 11 is using the previous generation Intel N5095 processor which has been superseded by the Intel N95 in 2023. Regardless, there's a few reasons it's still worth considering. Apart from the low price and good build quality, it has a nice set of ports on it. You don't often see dual USB-C, an SD card reader or mini display port on a budget mini PC. The bottom plate is metal and has a thermal pad which connects to the NVMe drive and keeps it cool, just like an Intel NUC. The Geekon Mini Air 11 also was a really impressive performer. I've tested a few budget mini PCs with the Intel N5095 and the Geekom easily beat the lot. It also had by far the best cooling result for a budget mini PC with a max CPU temp coming in at a very low 67C. Not only did it run cool, it was also quiet. One of the quietest actively cooled mini PCs I've tested. My only complaints? Well, it comes with a single RAM stick, but luckily that only slightly affected graphics performance 5% at most. The Wi-Fi chip is soldered on and isn't really recent, and the BIOS is locked down tighter than Area 51. But otherwise, it's a great budget unit. As a web browsing, media player, basic office mini, or plenty of other uses, it's fine. So, if raw performance isn't the most important to you, or if you're looking for something dirt cheap that isn't crap, the Geekom Mini Air 11 might just be what you're looking for. Oh, and note, the accessory kit I received might not be the same as what it comes with now. Intel released some new budget CPUs in 2023, and this first entry features the Intel N95. Say hello to the B-Link Mini S12. It sure isn't perfect, but still has a lot going for it. One thing you will notice is the lack of ports on offer. 4 USB, a LAN jack, and dual HDMI. This really is a bare bone offering. However, for as low as $138 US with the latest entry level Intel CPU, it's understandable. The box is decent quality and has some cooling for the included NVMe drive. Performance wise, it's not the greatest out of the box. The N95 can do better than what B-Link has this mini doing by default. But by upping the power limit in the BIOS, which I show you how to easily set in the video review, you can get a nice boost to CPU performance. Just be aware, it does increase maximum CPU temperature quite a bit, but it's not a level I would worry about. Like the Geekom Mini Air 11, the S12 is a quiet mini PC and also has an older soldered on Wi-Fi chip. At these prices, it's not surprising. The Mini S12 comes with the usual B-Link accessory kit consisting of dual HDMI cords and a monitor mount. There's also an upgraded N100 model available which I haven't reviewed, so I can't give you the lowdown on that one but it should be similar 
and have quite a bit more graphics performance if that's what you're looking for. The B-Link Mini S12 is a simple box with simple features, but it's competent with the latest gen Intel processor and a low price. So that's why it comes in at number four. The B-Link EQ12 is what I'd call a premium budget mini, as it has some features that you might not need and is the most expensive unit in this roundup at around 230 US dollars. This one comes with the Intel N100, which has more graphics performance than the N95. If you're looking for a mini PC with dual Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, then look no further. While the plastic box on the outside is mostly the same as the Mini S12, inside it's had an upgrade. There's an active cooler for the NVMe drive, and the Wi-Fi 6 card is replaceable. Performance is good out of the box, but not running at maximum, and I think the cooling can handle it. The bias tweak in my review shows you how to get the N100 running at peak performance. CPU temperature was fine all around, and the EQ12 is pretty quiet overall. The cooling on the NVMe drive keeps the drive well below any temperatures you need to worry about, but it's only running at Gen 3 X1 speed, so it's not much faster than SATA. The B-Link EQ12 is a great budget mini PC, just not the cheapest, but you get what you pay for. The Chewy Lockbox X is a latecomer to the party, but still was one of my favourites when comparing the launch pricing of each mini. Its feature set is similar to the EQ12, and comes in at $199 US dollars. However, discounting is fierce on Amazon in the US, and that's why it's dropped to second place. When it comes to plastic case quality, this one is the winner, and I think the two-tone design looks pretty nice too. Also, I think it has the best set of ports. It's one of the few minis to feature the DisplayPort along HDMI, four USB 3 ports, dual LAN with one of them being 2.5 gigabit, and most impressive of all, a USB-C port with display out capability and USB power delivery. The specs were wrong, saying it didn't support it, and I didn't try it during my review. But after a comment asking me to give it a shot, it turns out the Chewy Lockbox X has this unique feature. So if you're looking for an N100 box with USB-C power delivery, this is your mini, and is the killer feature if you need it. Apart from that, it comes with 12GB of DDR5 RAM which is soldered on, an M.2 Wi-Fi 6 card, and an M.2 SATA SSD. Performance was great out of the box, and it was pretty quiet too. There are no accessories with it, and no further storage expansion, but for its feature set and build quality for the dollars, the Chewy Lockbox X N100 nabs second place. The Morphine M9 was the first mini PC I reviewed to feature the new Intel N100 budget CPUs, and it gets a lot of things right. For one, it's the only mini PC in the roundup with a metal case, and I can't stress how much more premium it feels because of it. Oh, and you can still find it for as low as $150 US pre-built, and that's how it made its way to first place on this list. That's much better than the launch pricing. The Morphine M9 features an M.2 Wi-Fi 6 card, and 2.5 gigabit for networking, as well as a 2242 M.2 SATA slot for additional storage. Performance was also good across the board, and just like a good budget mini PC, it was pretty quiet during use as well. Where it falls short is port selection, just four regular USB 3 ports. With a wired keyboard and mouse, you're down to just two if you're not using a USB hub. Also, the lack of M.2 cooling resulted in high temperatures on the included NVMe SSD. Still, for the price, I'd recommend it over the N100 B-Link Mini S12 variant just for the lovely metal case alone. Price, performance and build helps the Morphine M9 hit first place based on US Amazon pricing. Congrats! <laughs> that's not all, because yesteryear's mid-range has now become today's budget and if you're in the US, you sure can get AMD mid-range minis for great prices. My pick, if you want the best bang for buck mini PC, is the Trigkey Ryzen 5 5500U for $240. US I think it's a banger of a deal, and will easily outperform any Intel budget mini PC. By a lot. Normally, I would never recommend a mini PC I haven't reviewed, but I'll make an exception this one time for a couple of reasons. The manufacturer of this mini PC looks to be AZW, the same one that B-Link uses, which are usually competent. And it's a Ryzen 5500U 6-core processor for $240 US dollars with 16GB of RAM 
and 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. Damn! So unless you specifically need AV1 hardware video decoding or dual LAN jacks, or just want the cheapest mini PC, then this one may just be the right choice for you. Everyone outside the US is unlikely to have a mini PC deal this good, but look around and see what you can find. Otherwise, you've got my top 5 to fall back on. Thanks for watching, and there will be more budget mini reviews coming in the future. We'll finish up 2023 with another top 5 roundup. Cheers!